Hi guys, welcome to Explosive Discharge. Today we're going to be looking at a review and teardown of the USB 2.0 HDMI video game capture with quick installation guide and software CD for PC. So, when we were shooting the uh, backup video, our, our last video, I wanted to do some screen capture of some PCs with a HDMI capture card, but I didn't have one. So I ordered one and we ended up not doing it because it was awful. So we're going to go into why that was today. So this thing was £8.73 plus about £2 postage, it was just under a tenner. And this is the description. So straight out of the box these things seemed sketchy. So I wanted to order one that definitely said Full HD, 1080p, 60 I'm guessing frames per second capture. It says in several places that it supports 1920 by 1080 So I figured if I order it on eBay, it says that, if it doesn't do it, I'm definitely going to get my money back. And that is what unfortunately had to happen. So we're going to have a quick little look at the quality of this thing right now. So this is what you end up getting. You get a CD with the drivers on it, which uh, end up coming off Windows Update anyway. So that can go straight in the bin. You get the HD capture card itself. So you can throw that straight away. It's got a USB 2.0 port on one end and a HDMI socket on the other end. And you get a USB extender, which in theory is quite helpful because the HDMI cables are typically quite inflexible and you don't really want that much torque on the USB port, it's going to end in sadness. So that, that does help a little bit. Nice idea, shame the whole thing's crap. So what we'll do is plug it in and have a look what it looks like. Okay guys, so this is what the capture quality looks like and it is awful. It's so bad. We're looking at a 1080p output from my laptop, uh, running back into this, and the quality is absolutely terrible. Like Everything on the screen is practically unreadable. Just to show you what it uh, looks like normally, I can switch straight over to screen capture of the same window, and everything's perfectly readable. <laughs> so this is, this is unusable. It's definitely not 1080p, and uh, you'll be pleased to know I've got my money back straight away. For anyone keeping track of the kind of resolution you actually get out of this thing, it looks like it's 720 by 480. So looking at the video properties, you can select uh, PAL, NTSC or CCAM video standards. So it's just a, uh, just a composite video capture card. You can see how many lines it's detected there, um, some other crap settings. The video crossbar lets you select video tuner in and composite in. Video tuner in seems to be black and white, and composite in seems to be colour, which is great. Uh, I haven't checked whether the audio works or not yet. Let's not let's not bother with that. So let's open this bad boy up and have a look at what it's got inside. So the first thing that you might notice is all of the chips have got their uh, got their identity scratched off. Uh, this is a HDMI to USB seventeen o five two eight. Probably just their internal part number. It looks like there's space here for another USB connector. No, there's only three pins, huh? Okay. Oh, it's probably a uh, it's probably an infrared receiver because these these chips are usually used for uh, old style video tuner and composite video receivers built into one. So you, you, it might come with a uh, infrared remote to change channels with. So, if I was a uh, guessing man, I would say this chip right here is a HDMI to composite video converter. And then either this chip or this chip are a uh, composite video to USB capture chip. I am I reckon it's this one, because it's got USB lines going straight to the USB port. So, I don't really know what this is, to be honest with you. Unless, unless they're doing the HDMI conversion in two stages. Unless it takes takes two chips to do that, maybe. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult for me to be able to dive into data sheets and figure out what some of these chips are because they've got the they've got the part numbers ground off. So what what I think we're going to do is have a little poke around in here, and I'm going to see if if I plug an HDMI source in and power it, if I can find composite video just using a little uh, composite video screen in fact we can use our field monitor for the camera to do that so what i've got here is our cctv tester screen so we've got a composite video connector composite video coupler composite video to bnc and then we've got a bnc 
a oscilloscope probe so we can have a probe around on this board and hopefully see some video. So this is our capture card setup and it is currently capturing uh, this blank monitor which looks something like this. Excuse that I haven't sorted the colour out, I don't think it really matters anymore. So this is what it looks like, we've got the HDMI port down here, you can just see the pins at this side. This is what I suspect to be the HDMI to composite video uh, chip. It, it may be related to the chip on the other side, not completely sure yet. Uh, this has got its part number ground off. A uh, whole bunch of passives around here. Mostly looks like capacitors for maybe DC blocking the signals between these two chips and decoupling. And there's maybe some resistors here as well. Kind of hard to tell at the moment and this chip here and the USB port just over here in the distance there we go so we're suspecting that this chip here is the composite video to USB chip so if we have a look just here these two capacitors and there's two traces going down into this chip here maybe these could be the uh, maybe these could be the video signal so let's give it a little probe I've got my probe on one times so we're suspecting this one here. No. Okay. This one here. No. Right, okay. What else do we have? This one here. No. No. Oh, hello, we had something there. So you can hopefully see here, as I touch onto the pin of this, I'm assuming capacitor right here we get the uh, the video display up on the monitor. So that's a composite video signal right there. So I was wrong about this chip that up here that I thought might have been an EEPROM. It turns out it's actually a digital to analog converter. So this is the uh, stereo digital to analog converter that looks like it's taking up the digital audio from the HDMI and converting it to analog audio for the uh, composite video capture chip. So in this chip here we don't really know too much about it. You can see there's absolutely no chance of recovering the part number off that. We could delete the, uh, the IC but I don't really have the setup to do that. This is what we're suspecting to be the HDMI to composite video chip and can't really verify that looking straight at it. So if we start with this chip over here which we're pretty sure is composite video to USB because probing this capacitor right here, we can see the composite video and we can see that's going into this pin right here. So we've got the video signal on this side as well. Have we got it here? Ah, oh, interesting, that's black and white. So it may actually be that this circuit here is mixing together the, uh, the luminosity and the chroma signals. So you can see this signal here is, seems to be coming through this via from the other side of the board. So let's flip it over and see if we can locate that. So in order to find where these uh, vias are coming through with the composite video on the other side, we're going to have a go at removing this chip with some hot air. So we've removed this IC here and these actually, these here are the two vias that we were looking at. So these are these are where the composite video was going into that composite to USB capture chip. And you can see both of those are coming out of these pins of the IC here. So these are pin numbers 43 and 44 of the IC. So what we could do is uh, build a map of all of these pins, put all the grounds in, all the supplies and uh, the pins that we know, and go through every data sheet we can possibly find on the internet until we find one that matches. But really, there's there's not that much point in getting into it now. It will, it will take quite a long time to do that. But if you needed to reverse engineer it, that would be the next step that I'd do. So I had another little look around online, and unfortunately I've not been able to find anything for what um for what these ICs might actually be. So this is the block diagram of how I think it works, starting from the USB end. It's a uh, composite to USB chip, a UTV007. So I actually had a look at the uh, USB device IDs for that, and I found one that matched um, USB TV007. That was this one here. And then either at the HDMI end, it's a HDMI to composite uh, chip, and then a composite video processor. So that lets you... Uh, adjust the stuff like the brightness and the contrast 
Um, I don't think this configuration is actually that likely because some of the other chips that use this don't use a composite video processor. I think it's all done in this chip. So this probably isn't very likely. But what we do know is the, um, the uh, digital audio signals come out of the HDMI and go through this DAC and come out as uh, analog audio into the capture chip. So this is what I think is the more likely scenario. Uh, HDMI gets converted to some other format, possibly RGB. And then the next chip along does the RGB or whatever other carrier it is to composite and then into the composite chip. So in an effort to try and figure out what the uh, HDMI receiver chip was, I had a look at the uh, HDMI website. And you can see there's this pin out here and there's the uh, DDC, which is this one here, the display data channel. And that uh, communicates uh, device identification data. So the manufacturers, I think the manufacturers are as in the people that actually make the whole product rather than the manufacturer of just the specific chip can program their uh, brand name and things like that and the part number into it. So I tried a application out called uh, Monitor Info View to try and work out what that was and I found the manufacturer ID and I don't even know exactly where that led me but I did find a reference to AGO. Uh, a lot of the um, manufacturer numbers are like a, a three letter to identifier created by the HDMI organisation that oversees all of this and you can actually look these up on a website called uh, oh, the UEFI website um, and you can find AGO translates to this Algol Tech Inc which is a uh, Chinese company and the company that actually manufactured this um, this entire uh, PCB and product so unfortunately that doesn't tell us exactly what the integrated circuit was but that is an exercise that you could carry out to try and identify a chip like that so there we go guys I'm afraid that's it um, we weren't able to figure out exactly what those ICs were but all in all uh, definitely wouldn't recommend you buying one of these things the quality is just absolutely rubbish I can't think of any use for why you'd need a uh, composite quality of an HDMI capture. It's completely pointless. So if you are looking for a product like this, just make sure it hasn't got HD capture written on it and um, make sure it costs more than eight or nine pounds. I think the uh, the absolute cheapest ones you can get are probably between 50 to 100 pounds for, for a decent real HDMI capture device. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully it was at least slightly interesting. Uh, give us a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed it. We've got a couple of videos lined up in the next few weeks that are completely different, so you should look forward to those. Thanks for watching.